This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We praise God for bringing us now to the month of March. Oh, I love March, the madness and everything that is involved in it. And all great men are born in March. That's free. But uh, as we continue in our discussion and looking at chapter two, what's at our core, uh, there are some values that we cannot uh, get around. And one is that we would be able to stand upon the authority of God's word uh, in season and out of season against outside foes and sometimes internal foes. We must stand upon the word of God because uh, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. He owns it. Uh, he said, I built it. And then he said, he will protect it, which means that we must stay firm and stand uh, no matter what comes our way. We learned this lesson from Peter, and uh, we will take these principles that Peter has shared with us, who was one who was courageous and one who uh, stood his ground when it came uh, to the authority of the Bible. Today, it's time to take a stand. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad. Anybody else glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. To all of you who are in this house and to those who are watching by way of media, we praise God for all of you. Uh, the Lord has brought us now through January, February, and we are in the marvelous month of March. Uh, we give God praise for that. If you'll stand to your feet wherever you are, uh, he's giving you strength in your ankle bones. Why don't you stand and give him some praise as we go higher in our service this morning. Let the glory of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord. Let the dance of the Lord, let it rise among us. 
among us. Let the dance of our Lord, let it hey. rise among us. Let the dance of our King, let it rise among us. Let it rise. And dance to the Lord, the dance of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Rise We're going to dance for you. Good morning, family. Thank you to the music ministry for that song. Can we give them a hand clap of praise? We can bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you once more saying thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us into this third month of 2023. Dear Lord, this is a great month, it's the month of March. Dear Lord, thank you for letting these doors stand open. Thank you for letting those come and serve and just do the duties that they're called to do each and every Sunday. Thank you for the man that comes and stands. Thank you for his associates. Thank you for the people who work with the children the youth department, the ushers, the trustees, all that come, dear Lord, in the workings of this church. Thank you for those who maintain and clean our church and do maintenance, dear Lord. Dear Lord, thank you for all and each and every member that comes each and every Sunday, dear Lord. Bless their households. Thank you for those who are able to watch, dear Lord, over television, the airwaves, that they may see that we are still serving a living God. Dear Lord, we ask that you will bless those, bless the families who are bereaved. Dear Lord, bless the Dorsey family. Bless all other families who are recently bereaved this year, this past year, dear Lord. We ask that you will just be there, comfort them. Let us be a comfort to them, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we ask that you will bless the sick and shut in. Dear Lord, let us remember to visit and call. Bless those, dear Lord, who are incarcerated, dear Lord. We pray that your word is alive in the prisons, dear Lord, and souls are still being saved. Dear Lord, bless each and every door that is open in your name in this city and across the world. Bless our leaders. Bless this city, dear Lord. Keep the youth safe, dear Lord. The gunfire is just too much, dear Lord. We ask that you will be at peace, dear Lord, amongst the streets especially at night, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this service. We ask you to be an anointing in this service. Let us leave, dear Lord, 
find things as well as they were when we left. These and all the blessings we ask in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, SBC. Happy first Sunday. We made it to another first Sunday. Thank God for that. Celebrating birthdays this week, we have Tiffany Craig, Clarence Dixon, Charlene Blaylark, Alma Bush, Joanne Henry, Diamond Bakes, and our own Dick and Ted McConnell. We wish that you have many, many more birthdays to come. We lost our member, Deacon Verdi Dorsey. His funeral will be this coming Friday, March the 10th. Here at SBC, visitation at 10 a.m., funeral following at 11. We also like to pray for Sister Henrietta Moore, who lost her aunt, and Mr. Dizel Kelly, who lost his sister. Please be in prayer for those families. Amen. Wednesday night Bible study this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Please come and join us. Pacers game, Saturday, March the 18th, from 3 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Cost is free for all youth. RSVP by the church office or any youth advisor by today, Sunday, March the 5th. Our pastor's birthday is coming up, amen? <laughs> Next Sunday, the pastor's love committee would like you to bring a special birthday token for our own Pastor Dan who blesses us each and every week. Please avail yourself, amen? Remember, there are three ways to give. You can give in person, via Givelify, or you can mail into the church office. And last but not least, our thought for the week. Those who leave everything in God's hands will eventually see God's hands in everything. Ain't that a good thing? Amen. Have a happy, safe, and blessed week. Oh, I forgot. We also like to play for Sister Gloria Glover and family. She lost her cousin this morning. Amen. Your name in this house, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Yeah, my God reigns. My God reigns. Sing our God reigns. Yeah. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Power and majesty, power and majesty, dominion, dominion authority, you reign. Yeah. I see you singing, church. With power and majesty, With power and majesty, dominion, dominion authority, you reign. Hey, say, my God reign. My God reign. Sing our God reign. Our God reign. Say, Lord, you reign. Above every name, yeah, my God reigns. My God reigns. Sing our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Above every name, with power and majesty. With power and majesty. Oh, dominion. Oh, yeah, you reign. With power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion. Authority. Yeah.
Hallelujah. Oh, he's a great God. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God. Thank you.
Come on and give the Lord a hand praise. For God is great and greatly to be praised. And he has brought us through danger seen and unseen. He has kept us. He has blessed us. And he has never left us. And I know we got stuff to do, but uh, the whole reason that we're here is to give God an unrestricted praise. And that requires you to look back over your own individual life. Nobody can tell it like you can tell it what the Lord has done for you. And so as we celebrate him on this Sunday, we just again give God praise. Thank God for... Uh, the music ministry, we thank God for the writers of the songs and the arrangers as well. And then uh, it brings us to this point of uh, text for us on today as we uh, continue uh, chapter two, uh, chapter two of our core beliefs and our core values and continuing to hold to those principles even when it is not favorable for us to do so. So, uh, not to belong the time or prolong it, let's stand in honor of the Word of God. Good to see all of you in this house. Passage uh, comes from the book of First Peter. First Peter, chapter three. First Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 13, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. You read whatever version that you have. When you have it, say amen. And if you don't have it, look to the screens from which cometh your help. We won't be before you very long, beginning at verse 13. First word is now. Who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry about uh, worry or be afraid of their threats. Watch this, verse 15. Instead, that's why you got to have your own praise party. You must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks, you about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. Verse 16, but do this in a gentle and respectful way. That's tough. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Verse 17, remember it is better to suffer for doing good if that is what God wants than to suffer for doing wrong. As we move into these pieces that will deal with the courage uh, that we must have as Christians, uh, we just want to talk uh, today that is now it's time to take a stand. It's time to take a stand. And as you've been standing, you may be seated. And so we want to open up this section just by stating, you know, that there are tons of things that we stand up for. You can go with me here. The easiest is that when we stand uh, to hear the national anthem or we stand for the flag, when the president walks into the room. For those of us who've had to be in the courtroom, when the judge comes in, everybody has to rise. And then yet even uh, when we go to theatrical plays and other events, when it has been so good, we give a standing ovation. Um, and in this time, because how many of you know that we are living in the last days? Uh, we are living in troubled uh, times. 
But yet, even though there is trouble that is all around us, God has required us to stand firm. And having done all to stand, he says, keep on standing. Um, and that made me come across this question uh, because in the days of the Bible, um, they were under heavy persecution on the outside uh, and some persecution on the inside. And as I was stating last week with uh, issues uh, pertaining to the black church, now it's not so much of what Avondale uh, does to us if we think about Avondale at all. Sometimes the persecution that happens now is not outward, but sometimes it is inward. And it makes me ask the question, what if? Um, what if um, I decided to prevent a fight versus being the one to start one? Uh, what if when another individual was in my childhood being bullied by three of the toughest people in the school, and when I walked in, they were roughing him up. What if I chose to walk away instead of choosing to stand and defend him at his point? And it should make us all have what if questions because God has presented us opportunities for us to stand. Now the question is, did we stand or did we blend in? That's why that Romans passage says uh, for us to not to be conformed to this world. Don't blend in. No, no, no. You weren't designed for that. But he said uh, you are to be what? Transform. And when you're a transformer, you uh, transform not just within yourself. The transformation takes place with everyone that you come encounter to with who really wants to change. Are y'all still with me? In this passage, it is a section dealing with a persecution. Uh, genuine believers, and I understand everybody might not feel this today, uh, but I'm speaking to genuine believers. Genuine believers suffer all kinds of persecution. Somebody ought to say amen. From being ridiculed and mocked, being ignored and bypassed, being isolated and cut off, even in those days abused and beaten, imprisoned and murdered and other things. But all genuine, true believers face some persecution at one time or another, all to varying degrees. And the question is, uh, how can we bear up under the persecution? How can we be assured that we will stand up under the persecution and be counted, watch this, faithful not by people, but be counted faithful by God? How can we be assured that we will endure and inherit the hope of eternal life, of living with Christ forever and ever? There is only one way. Are y'all ready for the answer? We must stand up for Christ, no matter the suffering or the ferociousness of the enemy. I mean, just in case you check out on me early, let me give you these ahead of time. The first thing that we need to do, we find it in verses 13 through 14, is, is that we need to have good works. Number two, it is that we are to set our hearts on Christ and the great hope he gives in verse 15. Uh, then thirdly, we need to readily answer and defend the hope of salvation found in verse 15. And then we'll tap there by in doing all of these things, you got to do it with the right mindset and with a good conscience. And just in case you missed on last week's, good to see all of you on this marvelous first Sunday. We shared um, that Jesus was speaking and he said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
Here's the point that you want to get as we roll into the next phase. Because just because bold statements are made, somebody has to buy in to what is being said in order for it to be eternally true. God, number one, owns the church. I know, I know you've been here a long time, but you ain't been here longer than God. Uh, God owns the church. It belongs to him. Number two, told you that he built the church. He built it. He built it. Not only did he build it, he put it together and he straightened it out just the way he wanted. Sometimes he's saying, keep your hands off my stuff. And then lastly, he protects it. And so that thrust us into this particular position because as he protects us, we are the ones who must go out and do the work that he assigned for us to do. Y'all not saying amen, but guess what? I'm not requiring it on this Sunday unless you show enough feeling. True believers, stay with me. Good works is the first thing that happens. Under persecution, uh, Christians must continue to do good works. And I tell you, every time I turn on the news, uh, and you have to turn the news off sometimes because uh, it's always bad news after bad news after bad news. And sometimes after the news, I just get on my knees and I just start praying because I remember that everything that is going on bad, there is somebody, I wish you were here with me, who is working it out for our good, <laughs> even in the midst of this time. But he says of this in the text, he says uh, that you will have some persecution, but how will you respond to the persecution? Let me help you. Uh, in some versions, you have this word follower. Uh, this word follower means to be a zealot. Uh, the believer, each one of us, is to be zealous for what is right. Uh, and we need to make sure that the image is being uh, portrayed in the right way with passion and with zeal. I don't know about you, but the things of God should drive us to work better, love better, and to show enough, do better. I told you, you got to start by looking over your own life. Can you look and be transparent and say that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side... Where would you be? He called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light, but he didn't just call you out of it for you to just stand there. He called for you to take the two legs that he gave you to start walking. He gave you uh, two hands so that you could do more, two ears so you can hear the cries of sinners, two eyes so you could see the plight of individuals, and one mouth to speak and proclaim his name as such. God is great and greatly to be praised, but are we passionate about the things of God? I know it's tricky because we live on this side. We like uh, the comforts that we have. We want nice homes. We want everything to be peachy king. We want nice car. We want nice stuff. And I get you. Uh, I, I'm there with you on uh, some of the things. But guess what? I can't make the things of the world supersede the things of Christ. Because remember, he called me out of the world, so my mindset cannot be consumed with the things of the world. My mindset has to be consumed on the things that he has charged me to do while I got breath in my body. Uh, how many of you know that every day there's somebody who is checking out? I'm saddened by so many that are gone, but the Lord is large and in charge, and he calls back who he wants. But then those of us who are still alive and remain, before we get caught up, we got to get caught up into the stuff that he has called us to be, do, and to be, and to live up to that good works in a world where so many things are bad. If the Christians, hunt somebody and say, if the Christians, if the Christians do not stand up and do good works, then what real hope does anybody else have? Y'all still with me? That means we have to move beyond a careless attitude. We must move beyond a selfish 
uh, attitude. You know, I, sometimes, uh, you know, the first deals with carelessness is that uh, let everything go on because it's not relevant to me. Oh, no. But once the Lord did what he did on Calvary, as we celebrate that even on today, there is a response. There is a call that should move us from carelessness to having a caring attitude. And then selfishness. He could have came down and went back up. But I'm so glad uh, that he didn't uh, go back up before he finished his work in you, 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 y'all, and show enough in me before he went back to glory. I know some work in these aspects because we will do uh, good works when it is connected to our agenda to our agenda, but we got to remember that uh, the true agenda, this is my father's house, and that means every last one of us have to be about our father's business. Now, you can't know what the father's business is unless you get into the word of his manual. Uh, that means you got to pick up, I didn't get very many amens there either, but I'm sorry, that's the way it goes. The manual dictates how it's going to be in his house and for his kingdom. So that's why there shouldn't be a day that Sunday school ain't packed. Shouldn't be a day that Bible study, uh, we got to find uh, some extra teachers to teach instead of just having one class. They ought to be individuals. In order to do the good work, you got to be in the good book. Y'all still here with me? Uh, we must move uh, beyond uh, the surface uh, and sentimental attitudes that are connected uh, to things, but we with zeal. When is the last time that you woke up, and when you woke up, you really did like the old folks said, had your mind stayed on Jesus. I know you, some of us, we wake up and we're already uh, enamored by the, the schedule that we got to run and all the stuff that we got to do. But if God doesn't even give you strength or the mindset to remember what it is that you ought to do, you ought to be able to give God a hearty praise. When is the last time that you ran towards the word of God before you ran uh, towards other stuff? And I'll leave the stuff to you. That way I won't be in your business. Watch this. Uh, but God says this. In this day and age, I need us to be courageous. Uh, Peter was strong. He was tough. Uh, Peter didn't take no stuff. Uh, Peter stood up for the Christ. You remember, he took his sword out on one day. He was fiery, and he cut the man's ear off, and Jesus said, hold on, Peter, slow down a little bit, picks the man's ear back up. But can you imagine the man standing there with his ear off, and Jesus puts the ear back on the man of the miraculous piece. He said, Peter, we got to do it, but we can't do it with uh, Saturday night specials and knives and stuff. I, I want you to do it this way. I know he's getting ready to take me in to be arrested and to be beaten, but there's another Another way, and that's my way. What's this? He says this to give us hope. Uh, Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, he says, For God has said, I will never fail you. Somebody ought to shout there because others have failed us. But God said, I will never fail you. He says, I will never abandon you. Some of us, uh, if you look back over your life, you can check the marks where folk who were in your life walked out of your life and they left you high and dry. But the Lord said, I will never abandon you. So you can have and say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. Is anybody in here that can say the Lord is my helper? He is uh, my strength. He's the source. But watch this. It doesn't stop that he is my helper, my completer. It says that I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Because guess what, y'all? If God be for us, I wish I had some more Bible readers. Who, will, who can be against us? Job 11. Uh, and you know all of the stuff that Job went through. He says, but even in the midst of this Job, he says, having hope will give you courage. Oh, my hope is built on nothing less. Then Jesus' blood and righteousness, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I'm leaning on his holy name. He says, you will 
be protected and you will rest in safety. I know there are some that when we go to bed, you can't get no sleep. I'm sorry, you can't get any sleep. Because you are worried about what's going to happen next. What kind of scheme or plan do you have to put in place for the next day? But I can tell you why sometimes when my head hits the pillow, I can check out because I serve a God that says you can rest because why uh, you are sleeping and slumbering. He says, I will not. I don't sleep. I'm always on guard, and I wish I had a few uh, uh, Jehovah Shabbat people who would understand that he has around me encamped an army of angels. And that's why wherever you go, the Lord protects you, and you can go to bed without fear, Proverbs 3 and 24, and you can sleep soundly because you are in the master's care. We got to remember that even in the midst of the adversities that we face, that God will work out all things for our good. Romans 8, 28, I just got to read it, and we know. But see, when you don't know better, you can't do better. But I wish I had somebody in this house who knew that when, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are what? Called according to his purpose. Guess what? You don't have to worry. God handles his business. God will provide. Oh, I'm shouting there because there are other systems in place that try to take away everything uh, that you have. Do you know everything is going up except your salary? <laughs> and you still got to go there. But guess what? Even in the midst of your broke down and busted and disgusted itself, God says, I will provide the necessities of life for you, Matthew 6 and uh, 33 says, all you got to do, though, is seek ye first. Any seekers in here, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And guess what? Nobody you work on this side, God always takes care of our needs. Somebody ought to wave two hands <laughs> because God has always met our needs, but he's such a good father that he even gives us, watch this, the desires of our heart. Some stuff, we didn't deserve it and we didn't earn it, but because he's such a good father, he said, I'll give it to him. Anyway, that's why we should all shout on grace and God's mercy. God will if it doesn't happen on this side. And I know we want to get it on this side because we want folk to look at us. I'm going to tell you, if you put your hope in folk, you're you going to be in bad shape. Uh, you're going to run the wrong course. But if you can put your hope and trust in him, he says, I will give you a great reward, 2 Timothy 2 and 12. He says, if we endure, not if we check out, not if we stand to the side, but you got to have some courage. Uh, Y'all do realize it was that lion who was looking for the whiz to give him some courage. But guess what? The courage was already inside. He just needed to learn how to stir up the gift. And let me tell you, uh, there's nothing better to help stir up the gift than a little bit of trouble in your life. It will make you move away from how much you think you know and learn how to bow your knees in humble submission and say, God, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I trust you. He says, if you endure hardship, you will reign with me. But if we deny him, he said, I will deny you. I don't want anybody to be denied. God will strengthen us. He will protect us. He will use your testimony of the suffering for the advancement of his kingdom. I know why our faces are like that, because you said, why suffering? I can't answer 
why suffering, but I trust the one that says, if I suffer for a little while, it's only going to be light. And he says, and even in the midst of what you're carrying, he said, take my yoke upon you for, and learn of me for uh, my, my burden is light. And I know somebody in this room is carrying a heavy load. You got to learn how even in the midst of persecution to give it to God and put it on his shoulders. You do know he got the government in his shoulders. You do know uh, when you were little, they taught you that marvelous song. He's got the, come on somebody, whole world in his hands. Uh, and that's why sometimes you need to go back to your childhood because we were much better at receiving stuff way back then. He says he got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. He says you are more valuable to me than the sparrows. So just know that I will take care of business. He tells us uh, to understand that he will uphold us with his right hand. He says, but number two, you got to be uh, of a good heart. And this is why I made the comment on last time uh, about hurt, especially church hurt. Because church hurt will make you check out. The data has proven that Christians move from church to church, not because so much of what's better on the other side, but from hurt they've experienced in one place. And so they go to another place and then another place trying to move past the hurt. But I'm so glad uh, that God said that I can heal the brokenhearted. Anybody ever had their heart broken? Can you be transparent and say, I've had my heart broken on the outside and on the inside, and I felt like throwing in the towel, but when I think of what Jesus did for me on Calvary, uh, it makes me uh, get up. Uh, uh, it makes me to lift my head up and continue to keep on pressing towards the mark, which means it requires dedication from us and this is why when we come to worship, did you hear it? God is the object of worship. And when we give God what is due him, he empowers us to do what he wants us to do with his mission. You don't feel me here. I know we came and we clapped and we lifted our hands and we waved them. But it's not just for the waving inside of the building. It is so that we will take whatever he has inspired us to do outside. And I know as dark as the times are, some of us are afraid to go outside. I know you got that ADT set, doot, doot, doot. But there are some things that are part of our core that we cannot give up. If we are in Christ and he's called us to do the work, and if we look over history, what he did for each generation and how he's kept the church intact, there should be no reason for any of us to fear if our hope is truly in him. And watch this. God said this in James 1 and 12. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Watch this. Uh, you got to pass the test. Hunt your neighbor and tell him it's only a test. And you got to pass it. Y'all didn't hunch nobody, but guess what? Uh, Y'all taking tests right now. And some of us, we fail the test, but guess what? Failure is the prerequisite of success. Keep taking the test because God says, when you pass the test, you will receive. I wish there would be somebody in here that would understand that you will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him and live for him. He says in 2 Peter 2 and 9, so you see the Lord knows how to rescue godly people. There's no place that you will be that God is not able to rescue you. He said, I can rescue you from your trial. 
and I can see the teleprompters right now. There are troubles and trials that we are facing right now. And can I tell you, don't give up on God because God has not given up on any one of us. He says, though, one thing you sure enough got to do. He says, you got to be a witness for me. You can't be ashamed of me. You can't only shout with me inside of the building but not have a praise on the outside of the building. I understand we're only here normally one day a week for two hours. That's a little bit of time we can get over on each other, but we sure enough can't get over on God, whose eyes are watching on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, show sure enough on Saturday until we come back. But he says, uh, we need to have an answer. We should be able to defend his name. And one, we should already be a witness for him because he defended all of us. Oh, y'all didn't think he defended us? Well, we all been to court. Uh, uh, and God said, yeah, all guilty. He said, all have sinned and come short. It's a picture of an archer. I would know this because I am one. It's a picture of an archer who shoots the bow, and no matter how well you aim, you miss the target. See, we get caught up in how far our arrow goes in front of somebody else. I'm a little bit better than them, or not so bad as whoever. But in God's eyes, we didn't hit the target. But it was when we shot it, Jesus took the arrow and made it hit the bullseye. Oh, yeah, I need somebody ought to shout in here because you never would have made it if it had not been for the Lord. So why not? Everywhere you go, uh, any situation, you can lead it to a Christ situation. We can be talking about basketball and who were the greatest. But then in the course, Chuck, in a simple turn, we will say, but you know who is the one who gave all the abilities? It is God. And you can turn any situation. That's why ministry is out there to be done. The issue is, do we see the opportunity? And then, do we seize the opportunity? I'm out your way. I know we got communion, and I owe y'all some time. I understand. Let me just get this drink. Watch this. He says, but in order for you to be the witness that I need you to be, you sure enough got to have courage because folk ain't going to want to hear it. But he says, you got to move. And I wish that great psalmist of, of this time, maybe, uh, ludicrous, would help us out and we would adopt uh, the principle of ludicrous in the sense of what God wants us to do. Now, I know there are those looking to the side and you are perplexed because you don't know who Ludacris is. But that's all right. We're going to teach you. You're going to learn today. But Ludacris says, when I move, come on, somebody. You move just like that. God says, we got to get up and move like he moved. He didn't stay in the temple, but he went everywhere to reach everyone. Or is anybody in this house charged and make sure that they understand that your mission is not to sit, but it is to go? I'm tapping Matthew 28, and I know we're getting close to Resurrection Sunday. And we'll shout that day, but you got to remember each day with him, you still got to carry out the mission. The very first word is go. You got to ask yourself, yourself the question, are you going? Mark 16, he said this, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He didn't say he used the word go, but he said here's the mission, Luke 19 and 10, for the Son of Man, y'all do know that's Jesus, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. I'm shouting here because I'm in that number. And sure enough, you in that number too. But then he empowered you. He gave you the power. Uh, can I help you? Uh, Acts 1 and 8. But you shall 
receive, come on somebody, power. And after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And guess what? If you got the Holy Ghost in you, is there anybody in this house that sure enough knows that he lives inside and the Holy Spirit is patting you on the behind saying, get up and go. He says, you shall be by witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the earth. Can I share with you and make it plain in Southern Baptist, uh, in Avondale, in Cincinnati, in Ohio, in the United States of America, and over this globe, we got to go. And as I'm tapping out, he says, you got to do all this, and the opposition is strong, but the opposition is not unbeatable. Because we serve the one who already secured the victory. But he says, some stuff, you got to learn how to stand and have the right conscience. He says, they can scandalize your name, but will you still continue to do good works? Anybody ever been talked about? Oh, I'm sorry, maybe it's the opposite end. Maybe we're the ones doing the talking about. <laughs> but don't worry, you reap what you sow. Watch this. But it should inspire you uh, because, uh, one, uh, the enemy sees you as a threat to the success of the kingdom. Guess what? I'm, I'm not worried about what the devil uh, and his imps try to do to me. Uh, I just know that uh, I serve one who's greater than him and all his imps. Uh, all night, all day, I told you, I got angels watching over me. And you got angels watching over you everywhere you go because God is omnipresent. He's here. He's there. I wish I had somebody that knows this phrase. He's everywhere, so beware. And, and you ought to walk with your head up because your big brother is standing around you and leading you and guiding you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He said, I will not allow it to be so. So you can have a clear conscience. He says, you can still do good. It is through your doing good that some see that the way I treated them, see why you have a good conscience and the Lord lets you rest. He has some individuals that got, they, they can't get any sleep at all because they remember what they did to you. They remember how dirty they were. They remember uh, how they stabbed you in the back. And they, they remembered how they blocked your promotion. Uh, and they remembered how uh, they talked about your family. Uh, but guess what? Somewhere through that, they keep seeing you with a smile on your face and because you know that Jesus is the center of your joy. Uh, it doesn't matter what happens to you when you got joy. You can smile when it's hot outside. And you can show enough smile when it's raining. You remember the storms that were blowing just a few days ago. Even in the midst of the storm, you could pray, but you knew that you were in the master's hand and you could smile because you rest in his safety. Is there anybody in this house that knows that the Lord has laid his hand on you? Yeah, uh, you didn't need an ordination service, but yeah, it was a, a private conversation between you and the Lord, and he took his hand, uh, his right hand of power, watch this, and he reached down and he tapped you uh, on the head. I wish Dorothy Whitaker was here right now. Cause she says, somebody, he touched me. Is there anybody in this house who the Lord sure enough touched with his right hand of power? He's empowered you. He's gifted you. 
He's blessed you, and watch this, uh, with his left hand, at the same time that he was empowering you, he took his left hand and he pushed the enemy away so that you would go forward in the spirit of the Lord. That's why you can say his truth is marching on because you are still standing. The winds may blow, the storms will come, but can you stand? Is there anybody in this house uh, that's willing uh, to take a stand? Because the time is now. says the time is now. The time is now. We don't have time to waste. Yes, my spirit's broken at the loss of yet another deacon. And we've had a loss for the last three to four years. But the issue is not in what we lost. There's so much more to be gained if we can learn how to lean and trust and depend on him. He says, I need you to be an example. He even says it to young people. And I'm so glad that there was a James Milton that took time for a guy who only knew one song. And he encouraged me by saying, learn Keep playing that one until you learn another one. And guess what? That did the world for a young individual who just wanted to do God's will. And now with all the songs that I've learned, I don't keep the songs to myself. And that's why I teach children. That's why I teach anybody, anything the Lord blessed me to do. I know it wasn't me. It was all him. And somebody's looking at you. Just like they're looking at me, had the opportunity to tell the story to a younger group of individuals. And I told them this, let no one despise your youth. Be an example to all the believers in the way that you love and you live and in your faith. He's calling us to be examples. I'm tapping here because I know we got to get to communion. He says, if you are wise and understand God's ways, James 3, 13, he said, prove it. Don't just talk about it. He said, be about it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humanity that comes from wisdom. I'm tapping with this story. We all remember and know about the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China is a gigantic structure which cost an immense amount of money and labor. When it was finished, it appeared impregnable. The enemies couldn't get in. But one day, the enemy breached the walls of the Great Wall of China but guess what, y'all? They didn't do it by breaking it down or going around it or through it. They did it by bribing the gatekeepers. God has charged us to stand for him. There's nothing in the world that they can offer us that has not already been sacrificed on Calvary's cause. If you don't stand for something, come on, you will fall for anything. It's time to take a stand, and the question is, will you? For the angel of the Lord is on guard, and he surrounds us and defends all who fear him. And there may be one who is standing on the outside looking in. You're facing the same persecution. 
but you don't have the same defense. You're on the outside. And you hear a tug right now. He's calling you to come. And I know in your mind you say, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll wait till next Sunday. But keep re looking at the news or reading the paper. The obituary list rises. Tomorrow is not promised. We offer Christ to you. Is there one? Oh, my sister, he will get. Life abundantly. Come. If you know without a shadow of a doubt that you belong to him and you got your salvation situation taken care of, can you just wave your hand and say, thank you, Lord. Then the second call is to all of us who wave those hands. The Lord says, now more than ever, I need individuals who are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, not to be satisfied with a seat in the building, but to be charged and energized to do the mission that he called us to do. God bless you. You may be seated. And as we make this transition, What a wonderful message to line us up to this.